Uh, hello and welcome to the uh, Enterprise Suite uh, banking module demo. Okay, so <clears throat> we're in the banking module. Uh, you've got a flow diagram uh, kind of menu where you obviously can click on new bank or find a bank account. Uh, and you've got your vertical menu, which is obviously you can create a new bank account, uh, sorry, a new bank and a new bank account or a petty cash account. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I'm going to go find bank uh, to find what I've already got. Uh, okay, so I can see I've got HSBC there. Okay, so if I double click on HSBC, um, I can open them up. Uh, it gives me all the details of name and address of the bank, yeah, who the manager is or a contact there, um, what the sort code is and the account number. Um, and down here are all our bank accounts at that bank. Okay, so the reason we split out bank from bank account is so you don't have to kind of set up the same details for each bank account. Uh, so let's have a look. I can see I've got a uh, sterling bank account here, um, and it's got five thousand or pound in it. Uh, it's got an overdraft limit of a hundred thousand, so I've got available funds of a hundred and five thousand or pounds. And I can see obviously my foreign currency ones, my deposit account. If I double click on uh, that current account, it then opens the next tab next to it, and I can see the actual account number, uh, the overdraft limit, uh, last reconciled balance. <coughs> um, and all the transactions. Uh, I can do this, I can view this sort of, just give me the deposits, just give me the payments, I can do a date range, um, I can see if it's been reconciled or not, and if we look down here, yeah, you can see that some of them have actually been bank wrecked. Uh, you can drill down on any of these receipts or payments or transfers, <coughs> you can see the reference, uh, you can see if it was a supplier payment or a bank payment, yeah, or a customer receipt or just a, a bank receipt, and the actual amount of money, the deposit or the payment amount. Okay, so that's that's obviously relatively straightforward. Yeah, uh, looking at any particular bank account in the banking module, the bank account can be in foreign currency. Yeah, so I'll just go find there, and it keeps the actual currency in the account. So if I look at this U.S. dollar one, <clears throat> you can see all the transactions are in U.S. dollars, and the actual linked nominal code, yeah, to that actual bank account actually stores the base equivalent. Because uh, obviously our nominal is in base currency. <clears throat> okay, let's uh, let's do a bank payment. Okay, so this is where you've got a standing order or a direct debit, um, or you just need to pay something at the bank, like wages or whatever it might be. So I'll pick on my normal sterling account. Uh, that's obviously where you pick the account. That's the date. Is there a check? Is there a check number or is it direct debit? <clears throat> uh, what's this for? Let's say let's just say this is for wages. Um, I'll just put a thousand pound going out, and obviously this is the nominal that I'd pick for wages. <clears throat> I'll pick on uh, gross wages there, and the VAT code, and I could obviously split it against multiple nominal codes if I wanted to. Okay, so that's that bank payment. Bank receipt is exactly the same, except you're putting money in. Um, <clears throat> deposit receipts is quite an interesting feature because um, <clears throat> we all have this problem. Um, you pick obviously your bank account that you want to put the money into, uh, but when you do a customer receipt, so we'll just go into customer, customer receipt, and a toy customer. When you actually put the money in here, <clears throat> as default, it's going to go straight to the bank account. But what you can do is you can tick that little button there, yeah, called undeposited, and you obviously you can default that to undeposited if you want to, yeah. And then what happens, yeah? Is it's like it's like you got a check off someone and you're collecting the money or the cash, yeah. You're collecting it together and you're not putting it to the bank account yet. Yeah, what you're going to do afterwards, yeah, is actually uh, put it into the bank account. So let me just get rid of that one and open it up again. <clears throat> Deposit receipts. Here we go. Okay, so what I can see here is uh, there's that hundred pound I just put in, and obviously there's some other de un uh, undeposited receipts as well. So this is receipts off customers, whether it's a cash check or whatever. Yeah, and what I'm saying now is, well, I'm going to put that one in, and I'm going to put that one in, and that one in as well. Okay. So <clears throat> what happened is on the bank rec, it'll show us one figure, of four hundred pounds, rather than the individual transactions. And I'll put paying in slip number one, two, five, six, or whatever. Yeah, I'll put Tony on there so we can recognise it. Save and close. Okay. Um, let's uh, jump straight to bank rec so we can see it. <clears throat> so let's do a bank rec on that particular one there. Um, I will maximise this up so we can see it better. <clears throat> on the left hand side uh, we have all the outs unreconciled 
um, payments and on the right hand side we have all the unreconciled receipts uh, what, sh what we should have here is the last statement balance with the last balance that we reconciled and today it should be asking for today's well the date on the statement whatever it might be and then a balance at the very bottom of that statement so I'll just put something in uh, and then I go about my I can sort these columns differently I can go yes that one that one that one and what you see down the bottom here is the unclear total the real balance uh, the reconcile this time balance yeah and the difference to my actual statement balance uh, so it's dead easy this as you see them on the statement you, you tick them and if I go down here a bit you'll be able to see there's that deposited receipt I just did 400 and if I tick it I can tick the whole lot but I can also break it down into the individuals in case one of them bounced or whatever <clears throat> okay so uh, this is not gonna let me out because <clears throat> obviously I've got a difference so the reconcile buttons not obviously um, uh, you know, it's grayed out but it's very very straightforward I got my bank statement yeah or I printed my bank statement off or whatever start balance should be that the end balance I type in and I reconcile to that uh, a nice feature about this as well is the if I've missed if there's a, a bank charge or something I can quickly go into create create a bank charge yeah don't do it charges or whatever yeah 17 pounds okay 17 pounds uh, it I've got it default into bank charges because it's the most common thing for bank bank payment okay so if I refresh the list yeah then what you can actually see is there's my actual uh, 17 pound there which obviously you can reconcile as you go okay thanks very much so, so just come out of there cause obviously I'll um, okay what else have we got here uh, we have transferring of funds okay so this is where uh, I can transfer money between a a sterling account let's say and a uh, foreign currency account <clears throat> very easily so transfer amount I'll say it's hundred pounds uh, <clears throat> if I change this amount it will actually change the value so I say well it was actually 180 euros we got so behind the scenes there it will actually change the rate okay you can also do it sterling to sterling um, and you obviously can pick a different account here and, and that's it really so uh, that'll take a hundred pound out my HSBC account and hundred put hundred eighty dollars uh, eight hundred eighty euros sorry into my current euro euro, euro bank account. Uh, petty cash payments is exact and receipts is exactly the same <coughs> as um, uh, doing a bank payment, <coughs> just that you've got less detail. So just uh, this is if you're keeping like a petty cash can or safe or drawer or whatever. Um, you just want to keep track of um, you know the actual. The value that should be left in cash in there. Uh, so I'll just say this is I don't know parking or something. Yeah, the amount ten pounds. Okay, well I don't know what should I call it. Uh, <coughs> what should I call this uh, car? Something. We got anything there? Car. Okay, I'll see that a car hire, but you know you get the idea. Um, okay, so I'll save and close that. Um, this is obviously fine, so I can find the bank payments I've done, I can the bank receipts, the deposit receipts I've done, the transfer of funds that I've done, and of course I can drill down on these and open them up again, so there's that transfer that we did. <clears throat> um, we have opening balances, uh, we have an e-banking file, yeah, so we can actually uh, lay out an actual file, layout for that bank, so obviously this one's got a bank account number, bank ref, amount and currency, and obviously I could add in um, I don't know currency code. There you go. Um, when we produce a bank file when we do a payment run, yeah, that's the, that's the fields that it'll include. Um, preferences in here are <clears throat> when you're doing a, a, a bank payment, what do you want the nominal to, to default to? What do you want the default bank account, petty cash account to be? And also, if you're doing a receipt, what do you want the default uh, sales code to be? <clears throat> um, and obviously, if you type in a weird uh, bank rec date, you can change it. <clears throat> if I go to reports now, you can see I've got a few reports here. Uh, so let's say I do a, <clears throat> I want to see a list of bank payments. Yeah, so I'll print preview it, and just like the other reports, you know, it's a list. You print it off, email it, do whatever you want. Okay, so that's very simply, that's banking. Okay, thanks for watching.